Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the Professor Mohammed Omar Farouk for inviting me for your awarding uh, workshop. Today, I'm going to talk about how to deal with the challenging anatomy in EVAR. All of us, we love to have a case like that where the EVAR uh, fall inside the IFU. But real life is different. The EVAR challenges could be at the four levels, could be at the neck, could be at the aortic bifurcations, uh, could be at the distal landing tone, the common iliac artery bifurcation, or could be at the axis vessel, which is the external iliac artery. So let's start first with the neck challenges. We have four neck challenges. The neck could be short or could be angulated, conical, or excessive thrombus and calcification. I'm going to talk about every challenge and give you some tips and tricks how to deal with that. So first, let's start with a short neck. What the option? If the neck is less than 10 millimeter, then we cannot use any commercial EVAR, and then we have to use an alternative approach like chimney, PVAR, or FIVAR. If the neck between 10 to 15 millimeter, then it's better to use the EVAR with the subrinal fixations. If the neck length more than 15 millimeters, then you can use any EVAR available in the market. What are the point uh, tips of the neck 10 millimeters? First, start to point above the renals because always it's easier to pull the device down than push it up. Don't deploy more than two full stent or will not be able to pull the device down. When the stent acts the aortic wall, pull the delivery system down into positions, do an angiogram to confirm your positions, and then complete your deployment. What if the neck less than uh, 10 millimeters? Uh, which is at that time we are talking about juxtaposing our what? We have two options. Either we have to increase our sealing uh, uh, zone by using a chimney or PVAR or FIVAR, or the other option is to create an endovascular uh, suture line by using endo anchors. Of course, the best option is to use a PVAR or FIVAR, but the problem they have their own limitations. It's a complex procedure. The maximum neck should be less than 45. It's a large profile. It has a high renal re-intervention rate. It's expensive and custom made and takes uh, about, uh, at least in Saudi, about uh, two to three months. The indication for chimney graft, if you have an emergency or semi-urgent uh, case, uh, if you have a difficult renal anatomy, where uh, you have a short main, main renal artery or downward facing renal artery, if you have a graft migration and type 1 endoleak and you need an emergency solution, or if you cover renal artery by mistake during the EVAR deployment. What the IFU for uh, Shiva, the most important, the neck, at least you need a short neck 2 millimeter. You cannot do it if you have no neck at all. And the new ceiling zone should be at least 15 millimeters. The angulation infrarenal should be less than 60. Suprarenal neck angulation should be less than 45. And supra angulation should be also less than 45. And the maximum renal angulation should be less than 90. So what is the chimney rules? Uh, the new ceiling zone should be at least 15 millimeter. If we use one chimney, the new ceiling zone, we measure it from the proximal aspect of triple A to the highest renal artery. If we use two chimney, then our new, uh, new ceiling zone will be measured from the proximal aspect of triple A all the way to the SMA. If you have a three chimney, then you need a longer uh, ceiling zone, uh, at least 25 millimeters. If you're going to use four chimney, then it's better to use a sandwich technique. Oversiding is very important when you use a chimney, uh, you need at least 30% oversiding, otherwise you end with a one and do it. How we do uh, first we get a vascular axis, we get a femoral axis, then we get a brachial axis or uh, uh, auxiliary ac uh, brachial artery or auxiliary axis. Uh, then we target the uh, renal artery and we put our rosin wires. And then we advance a long sheath all the way inside the target vessels. And finally, uh, we advance the cover uh, stent inside the renal artery. Uh, 
uh, we prefer to go from the left breaker auxiliary artery. And usually, if you use one chimney, we use one 9 cm 7 French sheath. If you use two chimney, then we need two uh, 9 cm 7 French sheath. Or we can use a large uh, 16 French sheath and we'll put inside uh, the big sheath two uh, 7 French 9 cm uh, long sheath. After that, we start the uh, EVAR deployment uh, from the femoral axis. We deploy two or three body stent. Then we continue until the contralateral leg is released. Then we finish, uh, then we uh, release approximately of the supraenal fixation to fix it. Then we deploy the distal end of the bifurcated uh, graft. And then we recapture the spindle. And finally, we remove the delivery system. After we deploy it, then we start deploying the balloon expandable cover stent. Usually it has to be at least two centimeters inside the target vessels, one millimeter bigger than target vessels, at least five centimeters in length and end above the EVAR fabric. Otherwise, the EVAR will occlude uh, your chimney. It's very important to not forget to withdraw your uh, sheet before deploying the cover stent. And also the other tips that uh, the distal tip of the introducer sheet should be positioned below the suprarenal anchors pins. Otherwise, these pins can uh, rupture the balloon and you'll be in big troubles. And for deployment the balloon expandable stent, don't forget to reinsert the uh, long sheets inside the target vessel again. And after that, uh, we deploy the control limb of the EVAR. Then we do kissing balloon technique. Be very careful when you do that because the device has a tendency to move at this uh, time. And then when you remove the balloon from the uh, renal artery, it's very important to <coughs> use the sheath again because otherwise the anchors of the suprarenal fixation can capture the balloons. So the main problem with the shiver is type 1 endoleak. How we can decrease that? By lengthening the chimney graft, by having a long uh, proximal uh, land, a ceiling zone, by spiraling the uh, cover stent, by using sandwich technique to use three or four chimneys. And the question to use balloon or self-expandable stent is controversial, but in general, if you use Metronic, it's better to use a V12 balloon expandable stent. If you use uh, Gore, it's better to use uh, Viaban. Uh, self-expandable cover stent, but if you use Viaband, don't forget to put a bare metal uh, stent inside it to give it more uh, stiffness. Give you show one of our cases, 71 years old, uh, present with a large juxtaposition aortic aneurysms with four millimeter neck. You can see it here, very short neck, and also have a calcified narrow distal aorta, and also has a <coughs> conical neck. So we have three channels. We are able to treat it with a uh, shiver with good result and follow up after one year and no type one endoleak. <clears throat> the other option, if you have a short neck to use a helifix uh, system, it is create a stability of the surgical astomosis in EVAR and TVAR, it's very similar to the suture line. It can be used as prophylactic. If you have a hostile neck, you have a short or uh, uh, conical neck, or you have normal anatomy, but patient is a young, I need to give him a good fixation that lasts for many years, or a uh, patient you're afraid may last for follow-up, so you want to give him a good fixation from the beginning. Or you can use it as a treatment if you have a type 1A endolic as early or late 1. Uh, contraindication, you cannot use it if the uh, wall of the aorta away from the fabric of the EVAR more than two millimeter, or if you have an excessive uh, thrombus, or if you have a borsaline aorta, or if the uh, patient has a Nelix EVAS uh, system. So one of our case were being used as, uh, as uh, prophylactic. This patient, he came with uh, thoracic aneurysms. We have a good landing zone, two centimeters. But the problem after we deploy the device, the device moves uh, backward or distally, and we end with a ceiling all, only one centimeter. Even though it's, it looks no endoleak, but one centimeter in the thoracic aorta thing is not good, and we knew we're going to trouble in the future. So when there are with endo anchors with good result and follow up revealed very stable uh, repair. 
Another uh, patient who is 78 years old, he came to us with a ruptured throat abdominal aortic aneurysm. The problem, he has a very short distal landing zone, only um, 12 millimeters here uh, above the uh, SMA because we had to cover the celiac artery. And this was treated very successfully with uh, TVAR, but because, because we have very short landing zone, we put some anchors here to stabilize it. And we got a good result with follow-up one or two years with now without any type uh, 1B. Another patient, he can refer to us because he has a late type 1A endolique. You can see it here. And this treated very well with endo anchors with a good result and follow-up in one and two years without any recurrence of his type 1A B endolique, uh, 1A endolique. So we talk about the short neck, what about conical neck, by definition, is increase the diameter uh, from the top to the bottom of the neck more than 4 millimeter. This increase your type 1A endolic. Uh, how we treat it, have a low threshold for placing a palma stent, and uh, how we size the diameters of the device, we go with the uh, widest diameter, usually at the 15 millimeter of the neck. What if we have an excessive uh, thrombus or calcifications? We know that the risk is that can embolize to the renal artery, can cause migration, or proximal type 1A endolic. Uh, all major trials exclude patients with significant neck thrombus or calcification, but does it have any uh, science behind that? Uh, this is a nice paper from the Society of Vascular Surgery. They look at the influence of the neck thrombus on a clinical outcome and aneurysm morphology after endovascular aneurysm repair, uh, what they conclude that the presence of uh, aneurysm neck thrombus has no significant influence on short-term and mid-term EVAR result. So what the tips if you have an excessive thrombus, uh, first have the graft and angiocath in place before angiograph. Deploy the graft starting a little higher and gradually come down while deployment. Get it right at once. You don't want to do too many manipulation in that area because you can increase your embolization to the renal arteries, no ballooning, and decrease the wire and catheter manipulations. What if you have an angulated neck? What the solution? First, you need an oversize at least 20%. 15% will not be acceptable. Try to adjust your C-arm as you can see it here. So you need to angulate your C-arm so be perpendicular to the uh, renal arteries so you can get the maximum of the length of the neck. Through and through wire to straight up the neck or you palm. How we do through and through wire? We go from the breaker artery, we advance the wire all the way to the femoral, then we snare it, and then we pull from both sides, from the femoral and the uh, breaker uh, side, and this will help us to straight up the neck and help to advance the device. Or you can use a palma stent uh, to straight up your, uh, your neck. Uh, like this patient, he developed type 1 endolic because the angulation, this was treated very well with a palma stent. So what the tips, remove the stiff wire before deployment if you have a severe angulations because the stiff wire prevents the device from taking the angulations. Deploy the graph starting a higher and go down because it's very hard to push it up when you have severe angulations. Extra DSA. And don't forget to push the wire back uh, if you remove it to remove the stiffness from the neck. In experience centers, EVAR of severe angulated neck is safe. Results are equivalent to match control. No type 1 endolique migration, stent fracture, rupture, nor trouble A related mortality were found at two years. What if you have a narrow award? Bifurcations by dimension less than 20 millimeters in diameters. The problem can cause a limb occlusions. What are the solutions? We have a couple of solutions. We can crack the calcifications uh, by using kissing balloon. But after we develop the EVAR, in case if we have any rupture, we have an EVAR to protect it. And uh, sometimes we use bilateral uh, stent reinforcement of the iliac limb to keep them uh, open. Or we can use a water uni iliac graft and do fem fem. The other option to use the endologic EVEX unilateral graft because the main body of the device sits at the aortic bifurcation and no limb competition, kinking, or compressions. Really, new solution is a cordis ingraft AAA stent graft uh, from the cordis. 
uh, because it has a low profile and there is no IFU for the distal aortic bifurcation. And when I talk to the company, even you can use the distal aorta down to even 11 millimeters. What about common RT aneurysms? Uh, usually if it's more than 22 millimeters, we have three treatment options. First, to extend your landing zone to the external iliac artery, but then you have a problem with the impotence and the buttock claudications. The other option to use the uh, iliac side branch devices, we have two, one from Cook, one from Gore, or use a chimney technique. Or the other one to use a bell bottom uh, technique, but it's a uh, long-term outcome uh, of this kind of bell bottom technique is unknown. What about access challenges? If you have a narrow common femoral artery, go to higher incision. If you have an IP, uh, obese patient, cannot pass the cheese uh, because the artery is too deep, try to perform the skin incision lower than artrotomy wound, and then pass the, pass the delivery system through this to the artrotomy. Uh, what about if you have an iliac calcification, try to control lateral iliac artery, Got to increase the vessel size by batting serial dilators, perform balloon angioplasty to pre-dilate the axis artery or stent any stenosis, and of course, if you cannot do any of above, then use the iliac conduit. And if you use iliac conduit, you need at least 10 millimeter diacon graft. If you have a tortuous iliac artery, uh, you can use a super stiff wire like Lander Quest or Amplats to straight up the iliac artery, or you can put some hand pressure on the abdominal wall to reduce the iliac tortuosity. And the other option to use body wire technique or uh, body flush technique through and through wire, which we talked about it before. What about vascular access complication? Uh, Ilya Kang, uh, other, the most common complications are thrombosis, occlusion, dissection, perforation, or ruptures. How management? First, don't scare. The most important to keep the wire access is your life saving. Uh, balloon occluded infrarinal water from the contralateral axis. Uh, then use a cover stent, but you need at least two centimeter uh, sealing zone. Don't worry about the internal iliac artery if you need a good sealing zone. And of course, if you cannot uh, do any of the above, then open emergency open repair is your best. So in conclusion, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we see an increased number of patients referred to us with AAA without any suitable anatomy, but in experience uh, center AAA with unfavorable anatomy are manageable with PVAR, SHIVAR, or conventional EVAR with active subrinal fixation and endo anchors. Available evidence suggests acceptable midterm result. If you have more than one unfavorable anatomy, you have to watch out. An open repair is always an option. Thank you very much. And again, uh, for inviting me for your workshop. And if I'm live with you, then I'll be ready to take any questions. Thank you.